History of Afghanistan The history of Afghanistan, comma, comma, as a state began in 1747 with its establishment by Ahmad Shah Durrani. The written recorded history of the land presently constituting Afghanistan can be traced back to around 500 BCE when the area was under the Achaemenid Empire, although evidence indicates that an advanced a degree of urbanized culture has existed in the land since between 3000 and 2000 BCE. The Indus Valley civilization stretched up to large parts of Afghanistan in the north. Alexander the Great and his Macedonian army arrived at what is now Afghanistan in 330 BCE after conquering Persia during the Battle of Gagamila. Since then, many empires have risen from Afghanistan, including the Greco Bactrians, Mauryas, Khoshans, Hephthalites, Hindu Shahi, Safarids, Samanids, Ghatsnavids, Gurids, Kalis, Timurids, Mughals, Hatakis, and Durrani's. Afghanistan, meaning land of the Afghans, has been a strategically important location throughout history. The land served as a gateway to India, impinging on the ancient Silk Road, which carried trade from the Mediterranean to China. Sitting on many trade and migration routes, Afghanistan may be called the Central Asian Roundabout since routes converge from the Middle East, from the Indus Valley through the passes over the Hindu Kush, from the Far East via the Tarim Basin, and from the adjacent Eurasian steppe. The Iranian languages were developed by one branch of these people. The Pashto language spoken today in Afghanistan is one of the Eastern Iranian languages. Elena E. Kuzmania argues that the tents of Iranian speaking nomads of Afghanistan developed from the light surface houses of the Eurasian steppe belt in the Bronze Age. The Arab invasions influenced the culture of Afghanistan, and its pre Islamic period of Zoroastrian, Macedonian, Buddhist, and Hindu past has long vanished. Mir Y. Hatak followed by Ahmad Shah Durrani unified Afghan tribes and founded the last Afghan empire in the early 18th century CE. Afghanistan is inhabited by many and diverse peoples, the Pashtuns, Tajiks, Hazaras, Uzbeks, Turkmen, Amak, Baloch and others. The Pashtuns, with 55% form the largest group, second are the Tajiks with 25%. Excavations of prehistoric sites by Louis Dupree and others at Dara Ikur in 1966 where 800 stone implements were recovered along with a fragment of Neanderthal right temporal bone, suggest that early humans were living in what is now Afghanistan at least 52,000 years ago. A cave called Karakamar contained upper Paleolithic blades carbon-14 dated at 34,000 years old. Farming communities in Afghanistan were among the earliest in the world. Archaeologists have found evidence of human habitation in Afghanistan from as far back as 50,000 BC. The artifacts indicate that the indigenous people were small farmers and herdsmen, very probably grouped into tribes, with small local kingdoms rising and falling through the ages. Urbanization may have begun as early as 3000 BCE. Zoroastrianism predominated as the religion in the area. Even the modern Afghan solar calendar shows the influence of Zoroastrianism in the names of the months. Other religions such as Buddhism and Hinduism flourished later, leaving a major mark in the region. Gandhara is the name of an ancient kingdom from the Vedic period and its capital city located between the Hindu Kush and Suleiman Mountains, mountains off Solomon, although Kandahar in modern times and the ancient Gandhara are not geographically identical. Early inhabitants, around 3000 BCE were likely to have been connected through culture and trade to neighboring civilizations like Jiravd and Tapasak and the Indus Valley Civilization. Urban civilization may have begun as early as 3000 BCE and it is possible that the early city of Mundagak, near Kandahar, was a colony of the nearby Indus Valley Civilization. The first known people were Indo-Iranians, but their date of arrival has been estimated widely from as early as about 3000 BCE to 1500 BCE. For further details see Indo-Aryan Migration. The Indus Valley Civilization, IBC, was a Bronze Age civilization, 3300 to 1300 BCE, mature period 2600 to 1900 BCE extending from present-day northwest Pakistan to present-day northwest India and present-day northeast Afghanistan. An Indus Valley site has been found on the Oxus River at Shor Tugai in northern Afghanistan. Apart from Shor Tugai, Mundagak is another known site. There are several other smaller IVC sites to be found in Afghanistan as well. The Bactria Margiana archaeological complex became prominent in the southwest region between 2200 and 1700 BCE approximately. The city of Balsh, Bakhtra, was founded about this time, circa 2000 to 1500 BCE. 
It is possible that the Mac may have been an Indo-European culture, perhaps the Proto-Indo-Aryans. But the standard model holds the arrival of Indo-Aryans to have been in the late Harappan which gave rise to the Vedic civilization of the early Iron Age. There have been many different opinions about the extent of the Median Kingdom. For instance, according to Ernst Herzfeld, it was a powerful empire, which stretched from central Anatolia to Bactria, to around the borders of nowadays India. On the other side, Helene Sansasi Wittenberg insists that there is no real evidence about the very existence of the Median Empire and that it was an unstable state formation. Nevertheless, the region of nowadays Afghanistan came under Median rule for a short time. Afghanistan fell to the Achaemenid Empire after it was conquered by Darius I of Persia. The area was divided into several provinces called satrapies, which were each ruled by a governor, or satrap. These ancient satrapies included Arya, Herat, Arakasia, Kandahar, Lashkarga, and Kuwata, Bactriana, Balsh, Sadajidia, Ghazni, and Gandhara, Kabul, Jalalabad, Peshawar. Alexander the Great arrived in the area of Afghanistan in 330 BCE after defeating Darius III of Persia a year earlier at the Battle of Gagamila. His army faced very strong resistance in the Afghan tribal areas where he is said to have commented that Afghanistan is easy to march into, hard to march out of. Although his expedition through Afghanistan was brief, Alexander left behind a Hellenic cultural influence that lasted several centuries. Several great cities were built in the region named Alexandria, including Alexandria of the Aryans, modern-day Herat, Alexandria on the Tarnak, near Kandahar, Alexandria at Caucasum, near Bigram, at Borj i Abdullah, and finally, Alexandria Esket, near Kojend, in the north. After Alexander's death, his loosely connected empire was divided. Seleucus, a Macedonian officer during Alexander's campaign, declared himself ruler of his own Seleucid Empire, encompassing Persia and Afghanistan. The Greco-Bactrian kingdom was founded when Diodotus I, the satrap of Bactria, and probably the surrounding provinces, seceded from the Seleucid Empire around 250 BCE. Greco-Bactria continued until circa 130 BCE, when Eucratides' son, King Heliocles I, was defeated and driven out of Bactria by the Uesi tribes. It is thought that his dynasty continued to rule in Kabul and Alexandria of the Caucasus until 70 BCE when King Hermaeus was defeated by the Uesi. One of Demetrius' successors, Menanderi, brought the Indo-Greek kingdom to its height between 165 to 130 BCE, expanding the kingdom in Afghanistan and Pakistan to even larger proportions than Demetrius. After Menander's death, the Indo-Greeks steadily declined and the last Indo-Greek king was defeated incorporated 10 CE. The territory fell to the Mauryan Empire, which was led by Chandragupta Maurya. The Mauryas introduced Hinduism and Buddhism to the region, and were planning to capture more territory of Central Asia until they faced local Greco-Bactrian forces. Seleucus is said to have reached a peace treaty with Chandragupta by giving control of the territory south of the Hindu Kush to the Mauryas upon intermarriage and 500 elephants. Having consolidated power in the northwest, Chandragupta pushed east towards the Nanda Empire. Afghanistan's significant ancient tangible and intangible Buddhist heritage is recorded through wide-ranging archaeological finds, including religious and artistic remnants. Buddhist doctrines are reported to have reached as far as Balsh even during the life of the Buddha, 563 BCE to 483 BCE, as recorded by Husang Tsang. The Indo-Scythians were descended from the Sakas, Scythians, who migrated from southern Siberia to Pakistan and Arachasia from the middle of the 2nd century to the 1st century BCE. They displaced the Indo-Greeks and ruled a kingdom that stretched from Gandhara to Matara. The power of the Saka rulers started to decline in the 2nd century CE after the Scythians were defeated by the South Indian emperor Gotemi Putra Satakarni of the Satavahana dynasty. Later the Saka kingdom was completely destroyed by Chandragupta II of the Gupta Empire from eastern India in the 4th century. The Indo-Parthian kingdom was ruled by the Gandhavara dynasty, named after its eponymous first ruler Gandhavaras. They ruled parts of present-day Afghanistan, Pakistan, and northwestern India, during or slightly before the 1st century AD. For most of their history, the leading Gandhavara kings held Taxila, in the present Punjab province of Pakistan, as their residence, but during their last few years of existence the capital shifted between Kabul and Peshawar. These kings have traditionally been referred to as Indo-Parthians, as their coinage was often inspired by the Assassid dynasty, 
but they probably belonged to a wider group of Iranic tribes who lived east of Parthia proper, and there is no evidence that all the kings who assumed the title Gond affairs, which means holder of glory, were even related. Christian writings claim that the Apostle St. Thomas, an architect and skilled carpenter, had a long sojourn in the court of King Gond affairs, had built a palace for the king at Dixila and had also ordained leaders for the church before leaving for Indus Valley in a chariot, for sailing out to eventually reach Malabar coast. The Kushan Empire expanded out of Bactria, Central Asia, into the northwest of the subcontinent under the leadership of their first emperor, Kujala Kadevises, about the middle of the first century CE. They came of an Indo-European language-speaking Central Asian tribe called the Uesi, a branch of which was known as the Kushans. By the time of his grandson, Kanishka the Great, the empire spread to encompass much of Afghanistan, and then the northern parts of the Indian subcontinent at least as far as Sakata and Sarnath near Varanasi, Banaras. Emperor Kanishka was a great patron of Buddhism, however, as Kushans expanded southward, the deities of their later coinage came to reflect its new Hindu majority. They played an important role in the establishment of Buddhism in India and its spread to Central Asia and China. Historian Vincent Smith said about Kanishka, The empire linked the Indian Ocean maritime trade with the commerce of the Silk Road through the Indus Valley, encouraging long-distance trade, particularly between China and Rome. The Kushans brought new trends to the budding and blossoming Gandhara art, which reached its peak during Kushan rule. H. G. Rowlandson commented, By the 3rd century, their empire in India was disintegrating and their last known great emperor was Vasudeva I. For a period, much of modern-day Afghanistan was part of the Persian Sasanian Empire, since Shapurai extended his authority eastwards into Afghanistan and the previously autonomous Kushans were obliged to accept his suzerainty. The Kidarites were a nomadic clan, the first of the four Huna people in Afghanistan. They are supposed to have originated in western China and arrived in Bactria with the great migrations of the second half of the 4th century. The Alkans are one of the four Huna people that ruled in Afghanistan. The Hephthalites, or Ephthalites, also known as the White Hunts and one of the four Huna people in Afghanistan, were a nomadic confederation in Central Asia during the late antiquity period. The White Huns established themselves in modern-day Afghanistan by the first half of the 5th century. Led by the Hun military leader Turmana, they overran the northern region of Pakistan and North India. Turmana's son Mihirakula, a Saivite Hindu, moved up to near Padaliputra to the east and Gwalior to the central India. Hayu and Chang narrates Mihirakula's merciless persecution of Buddhists and destruction of monasteries, though the description is disputed as far as the authenticity is concerned. The Huns were defeated by the Indian kings Yasodharman of Malwa and Narasimhagupta in the 6th century. Some of them were driven out of India and others were assimilated in the Indian society. The Nezaks are one of the four Huna people that ruled in Afghanistan. From the Middle Ages to around 1750 part of Afghanistan was recognized as Khorasan. Two of the four main capitals of Khorasan, Balsh and Herat, are now located in Afghanistan. The countries of Kandahar. Ghazni and Kabul formed the frontier region between Khorasan and Hindustan. This land, inhabited by the Afghan tribes, i.e., ancestors of Pashtuns, was called Afghanistan, which loosely covered a wide area between the Hindu Kush and the Indus River, principally around the Suleiman Mountains. The earliest record of the name Afghan, Abgan, being mentioned is by Shapurai of the Sasanid Empire during the 3rd century CE, which is later recorded in the form of Abhigana by the Indian astronomer Varaha Mahira in his 6th century CE Brihat Samhita. It was used to refer to a common legendary ancestor known as Afghana, grandson of King Saul of Israel. Hibin Chang, a Chinese pilgrim, visiting the Afghanistan area several times between 630 and 644 CE also speaks about them. Ancestors of many of today's Turkic-speaking Afghans settled in the Hindu Kush area and began to assimilate much of the culture and language of the Pashtun tribes already present there. Among these were the Halaj people which are known today as Gyalsai. The Kabul Shahi dynasties ruled the Kabul Valley and Gandhara from the decline of the Kushan Empire in the 3rd century to the early 9th century. The Shahs are generally split up into two eras, the Buddhist Shahs and the Hindu Shahs, with the changeover thought to have occurred sometime around 870. The kingdom was known as the Kabul Shahan or Rathal Shahan from 565 to 670, when the capitals were located in Kapisa and Kabul, and later Yudhavandapura, also known as Hond for its new capital. The Hindu Shahs under Rajput ruler Hayapala, 
is known for his struggles in defending his kingdom against the Ghats Navids in the modern-day eastern Afghanistan and Pakistan region. Hayapala saw a danger in the consolidation of the Ghats Navids and invaded their capital city of Ghazni both in the reign of Sabuktijan and in that of his son Mahmud, which initiated the Muslim Ghats Navid and Hindu Shahi struggles. Sabuktijan, however, defeated him, and he was forced to pay an indemnity. Hayapala defaulted on the payment and took to the battlefield once more. Hayapala however, lost control of the entire region between the Kabul Valley and Indus River. Before his struggle began Jaipal had raised a large army of Punjabi Hindus. When Jaipal went to the Punjab region, his army was raised to 100,000 horsemen and an innumerable host of foot soldiers. According to Firshta. However, the army was hopeless in battle against the western forces, particularly against the young Mahmud of Ghazni. In the year 1001, Soon after Sultan Mahmud came to power and was occupied with the Karakhanids north of the Hindu Kush, Jaipal attacked Ghazni once more and upon suffering yet another defeat by the powerful Ghats Navid forces, near present-day Peshawar. After the Battle of Peshawar, he committed suicide because his subjects thought he had brought disaster and disgrace to the Shahi dynasty. Hayapala was succeeded by his son Anandipala who along with other succeeding generations of the Shahiya dynasty took part in various campaigns against the advancing Ghats Navids but were unsuccessful. The Hindu rulers eventually exiled themselves to the Kashmir Siwalik Hills. In 642 CE, Rashidun Arabs had conquered most of West Asia from the Sasanids and Byzantines, and from the western city of Herat they introduced the religion of Islam as they entered new cities. Afghanistan at that period had a number of different independent rulers, depending on the area. Ancestors of Abu Hanifa, including his father, were from the Kabul region. The early Arab forces did not fully explore Afghanistan due to attacks by the mountain tribes. Much of the eastern parts of the country remained independent, as part of the Hindu Shahi kingdoms of Kabul and Gandhara, which lasted that way until the forces of the Muslim Safarid dynasty followed by the Ghats Navids conquered them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.